Hi, this is part three of a series of videos on calculations with normal curves. My name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Normal curves are often called bell-shaped curves, but not all bell-shaped curves are actually are normal. Normal curves really have a particular kind of formula, which we're not getting into here. Um, <clears throat> normal curves are also called normal distributions, another name, also called Gaussian distributions. Not all curves are distributions. The word distribution means that it really represents a, a distribution of data, if you will, as illustrated with this histogram down here. We're looking at resting heart rates for all males and saying it's normally distributed with a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. The curve approximates the histogram, and then we sort of ignore the histogram and just work with the curve. And to answer the question up here, what percentage of all men have a resting heart rate of between 60 and 84 beats per minute, the key thing we wanted to do was to find the area of the blue shaded region, the area under the curve between 60 and 84. I approximated where 60 and 84 were on this curve, um, with respect to this curve, pretty well because I know how to interpret the mean and standard deviation of the picture. The mean is the center, the peak of the curve. The curve is symmetric about that vertical line. Each side is a mirror image of the other side, which is which actually is important for solving the problem, which I'll try to emphasize here. Uh, the standard deviation is the horizontal distance between the mean and either an inflection point up there, where the concavity of the curve changes from concave up to concave down. Turns out there's something called this, ultimately this rule that I used in the last video is called the 68-95-99.7 rule, and it says that about 68% of the data, in other words, about 68% of the area, is within one standard deviation of the mean. That 68 and this 68 have nothing to do with each other, by the way. This is just a coincidence that I happen to pick 68 there. It's the area that I'm referring to here in this 68-95-99.7 rule. To be within one standard deviation of the mean in this problem means to be between 60 and 76 for the beats per minute of your resting heart rate. About 95% of the data are within two standard deviations of the mean, reflected in the fact that the area under the curve between 52 and 84 in this case is about 95% of the total area. And you can also even extend it further, about 99.7% of the data are within three standard deviations of the mean. Three standard deviations of the mean in this case would be between uh, 44, which is 52 minus 8, and 92, which is 84 plus 8. I haven't drawn those and I won't, but the total area under the curve between 44 and 92 would be about 99.7% of the total area. Now it turns out with these normal curves and in fact any distribution, you want the total area under the curve to be 1, <clears throat> which is a little funny in this case because the curve actually goes on forever and ever to in minus infinity this way and to plus infinity this way. But the total area still is 1. Um, and so in fact, the area within one standard deviation of the mean is 0.68, since that's 68% of 1. The area within two standard deviations of the mean is a about 0.95, a little bit bigger. Uh, and 0.95 is 95% of 1. And the area under the curve between 44 and 92 would be 0.997 approximately, which is 99.7% of 1. Anyway, through some thinking about the area, the problem solving here, we can find the area that's shaded blue. We know this area right in there between within one standard deviation of the mean is 0.68. We know this area by symmetry is the same as this area over here that I did not circle, and that those two areas um, because the area within two standard deviations of the mean is about 0.95, was half. This area was half of the, the, the difference, 0.95 minus 0.68. Half, 0.95 minus 0.68 was 0.27. Half of that is 0.135. Then just add up these two areas to get 0.815, which is the, the total area under the curve. And therefore, the answer to the question about 81.5% of all men have uh, resting heart rates between those two numbers, um, assuming my numbers are right, which they probably aren't.
but we're pretending. Anyway, I want to show you how to get a more precise answer with a, with a calculator. Now, you may be using a table from a book, and that's fine, but I don't want to bias any one particular table. Um, and I also want, well, I'm biasing a calculator here by using a, a TI-83, um, but I figured it would be best to uh, get more precise answers with this. If you don't have a calculator to use, if you prefer using a table, that's fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to show you how to use this calculator to find that area that we want. And in fact, graph it. And in fact, I'm going to graph the normal curve. So i got to pick a window. I press the window button up there. And this normal curve that we were looking at, I'm going to want x, which is the horizontal axis, to go certainly between, say, 52 and 84, but maybe bigger. Maybe I'll go within three standard deviations of the mean from 44 up to 92. And I think I'll make the, the tick marks on the axis eight units apart, which is one standard deviation. What about the y-axis, which is really, in a sense, a relative frequency? Um, I think going up to one will be certainly fine, I, maybe even lower. The curve is not going to go up very high. But let's just see what happens. I'm going to see this distri... That, means, that stands for distribution. I'm going to press my second function key and press that. And I think it'll be simplest if we just draw with shade norm to um, approximate the area that we're after. <clears throat> so how do I use the shade norm? Well, first I put the left endpoint of the uh, interval that I'm finding the area between under the curve, which was 60, 60 beats per minute, comma, then you put a the right endpoint of the interval that you are finding the area under the curve for, which was 84. Put a comma. Then you put the mean of the normal distribution that you're thinking about here, which is 68. Put a comma. And then you put the standard deviation, which was 8. So this command is going to do two things. It's going to well, three things. It's going to draw the curve, shade the area, and approximate the area that we're after. There we go. Here comes the curve. You can see it is pretty low there. Can't see it real well. The area is about 0.8186, which is bigger, like I was guessing, than what I wrote before, which was 0.815. Let me change the window. Make Y go up to, say, 0.2. I think we have to go back and do the command again. Go to shade norm, 60, comma, 84, comma, 68, comma, 8. Let's see it better here. There's the area. Yes, about 0.8186 is a more accurate approximation closer to 82% than 81.5%. And that's the answer to the question of what the um, percentage of all men having, uh, uh, what percentage of all men have a resting heart rate between 60 and 84 beats per minute. It's assuming some things. It's assuming that this normal curve model is accurate, which it may or may not be, but it's probably pretty accurate. And it's also assuming my numbers are right, which is definitely not necessarily true. I just made those numbers up because they seem reasonable. And I pretended they were true. 68 beats per minute to be the mean and 8 beats per minute to be the standard deviation. When we, in the next video, we'll come back to this example once more. We'll talk more about what's going on here. And in particular, what it means to, to be within one or two standard deviations of the mean in terms of something called a z-score and ultimately answer the second question about uh, what heart rate is at the 92nd percentile.